Hello, in this one I'm going to show you how to prove that the intersection of two open sets is open. I'm going to use a lot of pictures to motivate every single step. It can be a bit overwhelming, but at the same time, once you get through the pictures, you can also be very insightful. So let's take a look at what I mean here. So here, I have the following, right? If you kind of just follow the top of my head, I have to pre-draw everything, because otherwise it's just like too much detail to try to draw in real time, so it works out just so. So like if you follow the top of my head this way, it's like the boundary of a big set that we're not even seeing, you see? So it's just like a boundary, and it's an open set, that's why the lines are dashed. Then over here, this boundary here, again where my head is, kind of, that's the open boundary of another set. So that means that this area where I am located is the intersection of the two. That's why over here I have D1 intersected with D2. Now beyond that, let's take a look. So here there's a lot happening. Over here on the left side I have P sub 1. And then here on this side, I have P sub 0 and Q. The definition of this set on the left side is that it's the set of all Q. Let me zoom in here so you can see things better. Okay, so it's the set of all Q and R2. So we're in the usual X, Y coordinate space. It's the set of all Q such that the distance between P sub 1 and Q is less than delta 1. So where's delta 1? The delta 1, you can imagine, is pretty much like a radius. It goes from P1 over all the way to the boundary, which is right now directly above my head, never mind the rest of it, okay? That's the first step. Good. Now take a look. There's also another set here. So that's called a del D2, rather, and it's the set of all Q in R2 such that the distance from P2 to Q is less than delta 2. So where is that located? What does that mean? So here P2 is like the center of the second set. I can't visualize all of that second set because it's too big to fit. So I can see it's center though, and I can go over here, all the way to the boundary. So where's that boundary? The boundary is all the way over here, you see? So that's telling me something really important. Okay, take a look over here. Delta 1 is pretty much like the distance from P1 all the way to the boundary here. Okay, this boundary right here. That I'm kind of tracing above my head. That's the boundary of that set on the left side, D1. Now take a look. That's telling me that also Delta 2 is basically what goes from P2 all the way to this boundary over here. Okay, it goes all the way to the boundary, all the way over here. It's that basically line segment. Good. So now let's think about this as the next step. I'm going to prove that the intersection, which is where I am, that kind of like cutout that looks like this, is an open set. So I'm going to proceed as follows. I'm going to take the minimum of the distances delta 1 minus the distance from P1 to P0, or the distance from, the, well, that's delta 2 minus the distance from P2 to P0. Why do I have to take the minimum? That's a really crucial step. That's why I drew this picture, because that's really the linchpin, so to speak. So here is P0, which is like the center, okay, of this bowl right here. Okay, that smaller bowl where my head is kind of located. Now think about this very carefully. So why do I have to take the minimum? So if I take delta 1, and I subtract from it the distance from P1 to P0, sub what is that saying? That's saying that basically take the delta 1. Again, that's the distance from P1 all the way to the boundary of the set on the left, above my head. And you subtract from it the distance from P1 to P sub 0. That's this chunk. It's the one from above my head back to P1. When I do that, it's going to give me this piece right here with the brace that says delta 1 minus D with the distance from P1 to P sub 0. I'm going to call that R for now, okay? Notice that it's a small quantity right here from p sub zero essentially like to the boundary see so why am i taking that take a look the reason is if i take this delta sub one so i'm taking that because if i take delta one minus the distance from p sub one to p sub zero if i let that be r then you can visualize that okay let me zoom in here where is that r well that r you can imagine it's like the distance over here okay it's from where my head is located over to here that's the r in other words, like the length of that brace. I hope you can see that clearly. So then if I take that R and I divide it by 2, you see what it's going to tell me is it's going to generate this inner ring right here where the arrow is pointing. So I'm taking R, dividing it by 2, that generates this inner ring. In other words, it's like a little set centered on the point P sub 0. And I'm going to call that D. And notice something about this little set. It's centered at P sub 0. It contains the point Q. And then further, that set D is clearly completely contained in the intersection of the sets D sub 1 and D sub 2 that I mentioned at the beginning. You want that. That's why I would take, for example, this quantity as an example, okay? 
why wouldn't I not take the other quantity? So remember over here, when we wrote this, we set up a quantity that said it's got to be the minimum of either this side or that side. So in this particular case, it says delta 2 minus the distance from p sub 2 to p sub 0. Why is it not that? Look at the picture, okay? Why would it not be that quantity? Well, over here, this is p sub 2. So that means delta 2 is like the radius. It's going to go from p sub 2 all the way to the boundary over here above my head, right here. So then if I would take away from that the distance from p sub 2 to p sub 0, that would be taking away the distance from here above my head to here. I would take that away from delta 2. What that would leave as a balance would be delta 2 minus the distance from p sub 2 to p sub 0. I'm going to call that r sub 1 as an example. That would be this quantity from above my head here over to the center, p sub 0, you see? And then, if I took that, and even if I divided that quantity by 2, that would put me about over here. And if I made an open bowl using that radius, think about that, right? That would be a bowl that looks like this one here. Look, the way hopefully you can see my to the top of my head tracing. You see that? And then there's an issue. That bowl is so huge that it clearly contains points that are outside the intersection. They're not in the intersection of d sub 1 and d sub 2. That's why I, in this particular setup, would not use this quantity over here. That might be the most vivid way to visualize it. It doesn't work. It includes points outside the intersection, you see? Whereas, by using this other one, delta 1 minus the distance from p sub 1 to p sub 0, and when you divide that by 2, that's a ball named D specifically that is com com contained completely within the intersection. And I want that because remember, I'm proving here, I didn't say it at the beginning, that the intersection of two open sets is open. That means every point is an interior point, or if you like, around any point you can stick an open bolt that is completely within the set. And that's why this is chosen this way. Okay, so then here, I have that R will be the minimum of either this quantity or this quantity. Now you have to be really careful, because the way I explain this is, anytime you draw a picture, it kind of reflects one specific configuration. But this configuration could shift, theoretically speaking. But this is good enough to get the idea across. That's really what matters here. So then this little disk D right here, this little disk D, which is, has a radius of R divided by 2, notice that it still contains the point Q. So what I can say is that little disk D is a set of all Q and R2, such that the distance from P sub 0 to Q is less than 1 half R. So what that is saying is, if you look carefully, right, this is P sub 0, this is Q, right? This radius here is r over 2. And notice that q is contained within that inner ring, within that inner disk d. So that's why I can claim that the distance from p sub 0 to q is less than 1 half r. So what is this telling me beyond that? It's telling me essentially that p sub 0 belongs to the set d, and specifically notice that the sub set d is a subset of the intersection of d1 and d2. You see? In other words, you see that set D over here, again tracing my head, is completely contained in the intersection. I'm going to zoom out here. Completely contained in the intersection, which is this region right here, okay? That shape. So what this is telling us essentially is that P sub 0, in other words, is an interior point of the intersection of D sub 1 and D sub 2, but P sub 0 is arbitrary, so what it's really proving is that the intersection is also an open set. In other words, it doesn't matter where you choose a point, you can arrange things in such a way that you can always enclose it within a, a ball, and the ball is completely contained within the intersection. So it's an open set. That's all I wanted to say here. Thanks so much. I hope it's been insightful. I'll see you in another video.